applying for public sector contracts, then this is ideal for you because we'll start right at the beginning. So this is the home screen, home screen of PCS, Public Contracts Scotland. And you can see here what I've done is I've gone to the suppliers area, uh, which you will have access to once you've registered to be a supplier. Um, I'm going to have a quick look for this um, notice. Now, I know that it's um, Glasgow and Clyde. So let me just search that. And I only want to see current opportunities. So I will do that and let's see what comes up. So you can see here there are various different ones. And if I scroll down to the fourth one, I think, yeah, fourth one from the top at the moment, um, there's the one that we're talking about today, which is the AMS services one. So if I just click on the, the title, once you hover over it, you can see that it goes blue. Um, and that means it's a link. So if I just click on that, It's being quite slow. <laughs> there we go. Um, so here you can see, um, now, as Fran said, this hasn't been updated on this website, but this is not now the deadline date. Um, so you have got quite a lot of time still to, to do the, the actual tender. But there's no place here, you'll, you'll know that sometimes there's a little submarine type button that says record your interest there isn't one of those on this and that's because um nhs greater glasgow and clyde they've decided to use pcst to carry out this tender um but just so you know so when you scroll down you can see a little bit of information about it um a support service specialist service for people affected by ms um, and then if you go into there you can see it's claire quinn that's named is associated with this that's running the procurement and if you go down, um, sometimes there's a bit more information, but in this case, it's there's just the same information. Um, the total value is £600,000, and that's not split into any lots. Um, Person-centred, flexible, equality-sensitive model of care, which provides support throughout the many years which people will live with the condition. Um, and they're asking you that services are delivered in accordance with the NHS Scotland strategies. So if they're not available, um, readily available within the tender documents, when we go to look at those, then that's something I would ask about either a link to that, to those um, or the actual documents themselves. Um, so you've got to manage services flexibly to ensure there's consistency of support offered across the city. Um, it's a 24 month contract, but there's options to extend by a further two years, um, uh, sorry, four years. Uh, ah, no, sorry, correct me again, two times 12 months, so two years extension. So it's potentially up to um, a four year contract. And what they've done in here, they have listed um, all of the requirements. So this is the minimum requirements that you're required to have. And we will look at that when we get into PCST. Um, and ignore that date of the 28th of November, because that will that, that has been superseded. Okay, so that's just a quick look at the notice. Now what we want to do is, if you look up here, you can see that it says project code 22582 and it's under ITTs. And the reason you need to know that is when we get to PCST, you'll see why. So I'm just going to highlight that and copy. So that should now be in my, uh, where I can paste it. I'm going to go to back to my supplier area and go right down to access PCST because I've actually got this set up as a one um, all linked together. So you'll see this is a different screen. This is PCST. And this is why um, I had to note that it was an ITT because where you go in, um, it's different if it's a PQQ or it's an ITT. So we're going to go into ITTs. And you can see there's lots and lots of different ones. Now, very unhelpfully, 
it doesn't have a column for the um, buying organization. Otherwise, you could just scroll down and look for Glasgow Greater uh, and Clyde, Gla Greater Glasgow and Clyde, but it's not there. So you could just go through and scroll and scroll and scroll, but you can see there's 135. So I usually, uh, at least in the first instance, try to use the search. So you can see I chose project code from there and I'm just going to do contains rather than equals just in case. And then I can paste in that number. And I'm going to search and we do it comes up. So that's a goal was a good thing. So there it is project code 22582. Um, and you can see here the new closing date is now reflected. So it's the 5th of December. So you've got a wee bit more time. Um, and again, you can see this one is light blue. So if you click on that, it's a hyperlink. So I'm going to click on the title. And up here on the right hand side, you can see this is where you express interest. So I'm going to express interest. Because then I get access to more things. Now you can see up here it's telling me I've got eight buyer attachments which I have to read before I submit my response. I'm just going to close that off there. The way PCST works is there are two tabs which actually the colours are pretty washed out. Um, so it's actually quite difficult to see. Um, but that is like a tab and behind it you've got the messages tab. So let's just do the ITT details bit first. So this is just like a front page, the settings. There's nothing really to do here, but you can have a wee scroll down um, and look for some key information. So there's Claire's name again. Um, you can see it's an ITT that's open to anybody. Um, it's categorized as social uh, care and services. Um, the closing date set at one o'clock on the 5th. Um, I would always recommend to you, do not leave it until the day of the closing date. Always do it the day before, at least, you know, as early as you can, really. But definitely do not leave it to the day because I've had so many suppliers where um, for some reason it could be Internet related. It could be a file that just won't load, whatever, and they miss the deadline. So don't put yourself in that position. So you saw the little warning about the buyer um, documents attachments. So if you click on there, you can see them all. And um, here you can see how many are in each subfolder. So there's nothing in there, nothing in there. This is a standard one that's um, just about how to use PCST. So you could download that if you're quite new to it. But you can see in here, we've got the vast majority of the documents are in here. So we've basically got seven documents in here. Um, so what I would tend to do um, is open each of these and then download it and save it in a folder. So what I would have here is a folder called NHS GCC um, and then in another folder MS. Um, 3rd of December, so that every time I go to that folder, I can see what the actual closing date is. And then within there, another folder that's called um, MS Tender Docs. And then within there, you can put all of these tender documents in that one area. And the good thing about doing that is that you don't always have to log into PCST. So you will refer to these documents a lot. Um, so it's good to just have those downloaded um, and refer to them when you're actually writing your, your tender response. So and then up here is where you've got my response and that is your actual tender response. I'm going to come back to that in a second. And if you wanted to, um, so this is who I've got here as my uh, contact details for PCST. Um, you can, if you want, add a user um, to to the list. I'm not going to click the but the the bin in case I can't get it back. Um, but yes, if you wanted to add new users, 
in here so that you had more than one person being able to work on it that's not a bad thing because if somebody is off for a reason or whatever and you need um, somebody else to access it then you don't need to get their password and um, you'll be able just to um, log in with their own password okay so that's that tab that's all there is to that tab then um, and then there is another tab up here, which is the messages tab. So I'm going to go into this again. Once you've clicked on that, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five sort of subsets to that. I'm going to go first of all into received because there have been five messages. So if you go into received, you can see the date that they were sent. And then you click on the subject. And in this case, it says there is now a 2P information by the um, incumbent, incumbent called, who's called Revive MS. Um, and that is uh, who they are saying is fully assigned to this contract. Um, but they're saying that they have not verified that information. So if you click here um, on that arrow, you can go back to all of the other messages. And you can see how you can see here that it's been opened. Um, and you can actually reply to it as well. Here's the one about the closing date. It's been extended by a week. It's now going to be Monday the 5th at 1 o'clock. Um, and the questions close on Monday. This Monday coming at 1 o'clock. So that's purely for information. So again, it's not very easy. If you think you would click on messages, but when you go there, there's nothing to click on. You have to just click on that blue arrow to get back to the previous page. Um, and then you can read all of these. So the first thing I would do is, if you haven't done that already, is um, read these questions and answers um, and then read all of the documents. So this is probably telling us that it was a typo. Um, it's been amended and it's now been re-uploaded to the area. I'm not going to read that one because it's probably very similar to the one at the top. But I mean, you would read that and open that. So now we've, we're happy we've looked at all of those messages. Now you can, if you want, you can print the current page. Well, there's not much point in that. Um, you could create a message from there or you would go in here as well to the other tab to create a message. Now you've got until Monday at one o'clock to do this. So just see it was about the qualification envelope. So just see it was insurance, you know, um, is this level of insurance necessary given the value of this contract? So that's just you know, complete rubbish. But just to show you what you do, if you wanted to, so if I've had it on occasion where things weren't shown correctly in PCST and I was able to take a screenshot, show them how it was looking so that then you can attach something to it if you want. Um, but you don't need to do that. And then you would think it was down here, but nothing's really that intuitive with this system. So it's actually up there. So you would send that message or cancel it. So I'm not going to send that. If you did send a message, you can see them in here. And just like you can with the received, the other way around is you can see whether they've read it or not, of whether they've opened it and whether they've read it. So that's always quite handy. If you find that time is marching on and the buyer hasn't responded to your message, it's always worth sending, like forwarding it on to them, um, give them another day or so and just say, look, we really need to get an answer to this question because the deadline is fast approaching. Um, it could be they've missed it. It could be that the person was off, in which case you might have to actually phone phone them up just to say I'm waiting for questions to be answered. So you can see when we were drafting that messages, you had the opportunity to save it as draft. If you did that, you'd find it in here and then you can uh, click on it again and then send it. So that's the message board. That's how the message board looks in PCST. Um, but once you've downloaded those buyer attachments, you've had a read, read of them, you've downloaded the messages, you've had a look at them, then you're basically ready to create your response. Um, so what you can see here is if I do that um, and sort of minimise it, you can see the headings for each of the sections. 
So if you scroll down, you can see all the headings. This means it's conditional. Okay, so you scroll down, there's actually quite a lot of sections. Um, but these are all quite standard on the um, SPD. So um, I'm going to go up. I'm going to open it up so I can see everything here. Uh, so I have, they've still told me again that I've not read those documents and they're quite right, I haven't read those documents, but I'm just going to hide that so you can see the full screen. Um, let me just say, I've had a look at it and it's not for me. I can decline to respond and that's fine. That means I won't get it pestered with any more uh, emails or questions and answers that come through about it. But if you've had a read of all those documents and you think, yep, I really want to have a go at this, this is for me, this is for my organisation, um, then you can click on the intend to respond. And what that does is it then opens up your response and you can see in here that there's a qualification and there's a technical response. And it tells you how many are missing. Now, that's really, really helpful because it should mean that you don't miss out any of the mandatory questions. Uh, well, you can't. It actually won't let you submit um, if you've missed out a mandatory question. Now, the reason I've only got seven missing is because it has pre-populated. So you can see here it's got my company details in there. Um, and the reason it's done that is because I've done a, um, a a contract before on PCST and it's remembered all of these things. So if you have already used PCST for this kind of thing, then you'll find a lot of these are already pre-populated, which obviously is extremely helpful. See if you haven't to key in all of that information again. Now, if I wanted to go in here and change it, it's not letting me. Click there, nothing's happening. And the reason is you need to go up and you see this little pencil. So that basically means I want to edit it. That's an edit function. Uh, <clears throat> so you can see what I mean about it's not hugely intuitive. You kind of do need to know your way around. But once you know your way around, it is a good system. OK, so now I am able to alter things. So you can see these stars here. These mean it's a mandatory question. And basically, that will help my numbers go down. So you're always, I don't know if it's just me or everybody's like this, but you like to see those numbers going down in terms of how many is left. So I've read the supplier guide. That was the one that I said there was a, a, a an ordinary uh, one that's just up with everything, any sort of tender. It's just there always. Um, and then you can choose the date that you've done that. And now you can see that I could, if I want to, go in and change company name, VAT number, etc. So all of these are now editable fields. Um, so I always try to do the, the ones that aren't mandatory as well, if I can, instead of just leaving them blank. So if you don't have a parent company, it's not a mandatory question, but I would just fill that in. Um, because sometimes it does tell you how many optional questions have been left blank as well. And it's just a really good fail safe. So this is just asking you what size of business you are. And there's a drop down box for that. So you just choose that. Um, are you a supported business? And a supported business is not defined there, but it means that you've got, I think, check this please, but I think it's 50%. Um, of your staff or more are from, are either have a disability or are from disadvantaged backgrounds. So in my case, no. Um, so here you've got, um, are you on an approved list? This is only if you're a non-UK business. If you are a UK based business, it's an easy one. Again, from that list, you just choose not applicable. I am a UK business. Are you collaborating with anyone? If so, then you would click yes there. Now, if you click yes, other questions pop up. Okay, and if you're not collaborating, collaborating with anybody else, then it just takes you straight to the next section. 
Um, in this case, there is only one lot. There really isn't lots, so you would tick that, and that will help your uh, number of questions you haven't answered. That will help go down. And then it's just details about the person who is um, responding to this tender. Um, this is asking if you're relying on anyone else to meet the selection criteria. So the selection criteria will include things like finances, insurance, experience, turnover limits, if there's any. Um, so if you are, then you would obviously answer yes to there and it will bring up other questions. Do you intend to subcontract anything? There's a just a drop down box, yes or no. Now we come on to what I call the mass murderer questions. So if you have um, answered yes to that, then you'll see down below, you get um, lots of more questions about what that conviction was, etc. So that's how you know, sometimes it's not very clear by reading it. You can see in here, if you, if you didn't read that bit above and it just says the common law of conspiracy, it doesn't actually ask you a question in there. So it's hard to know what do they mean like you have or you haven't, but it's a, it says up here, um, it's very legalistic language, but being the subject of a conviction by final judgment within the last five years for one of the reasons listed below. So um, and by reading that, you can see, well, you're, you, they are, you know, the, the right answer, if you like, is no. Um, and we can see that because those, um, conditional questions have now disappeared. Um, I also just put a not applicable in there. I mean, you can leave it blank, but then you would maybe think you've left things blank by mistake. So you just go through all of these and answer yes or no, and answer the supplementary questions if you are answering yes in any of the cases. So just keep scrolling down um, through all of these. See, there are a lot of these types of questions. Then you get to ones which for some reason don't hold your previous response, and I'm not sure why that actually is. Um, but this is about um, misrepresentation. Have you been guilty of misrepresentation? Um, so the answer would be no. Have you withheld such information? No. Been unable to provide supporting documents? Uh, and try to influence them. So the answer is no. Now let's just see if I answer yes, there actually isn't any conditional questions on that. So you have to be really careful you're answering it the correct way because there's no fail safe to check that you are. Okay, now this is asking, do you have to have a particular membership of an organization needed to perform a service in question? So just say it was, replacement of boilers, then the company would have to be a member of Gas Safe. Um, but um, I'm not sure with MS services, I, I, I would think maybe you, there is a sort of requirement to be registered with the Care Commission, maybe. Um, so you might want to, to, to say yes to that. And if you say yes, um, it will ask you for details later on. Okay, so now we're coming into the um, SPD proper, we're in section four, and section four is when we start to get some more of the, the detail behind this section. So in here, it's asking you about financial ratios. So we would have to refer back to what's in the contract notice in Public Contract Scotland and have a look and see what it says there for contract for, for those ratios. So usually it will be something like current assets over current liabilities. Um, or it could be profit, your, your profit margin as a percentage of your turnover and things like that. Right, so here it's asking for different types of insurance. Um, and now what they, they haven't done here is that they, they did have an opportunity to put how much it was um, in terms of the millions, etc. They haven't done that, so you would have to refer to the um, Public Contact Scotland notice again. If you don't think you are actually giving professional advice, I would imagine you are as part of this service, so you probably would have to have PI insurance. Um, so you can either say, yes, I've got this, or no, but I will commit to it, or no, I will not commit to it, or it's not applicable for some reason. So for example, I'm not, my, 
uh, it doesn't apply to me for employers insurance because of the size of my company. So I just say it's, I'm exempt for that. But the good thing is that if you don't have the level of insurance that is required in the contract notice, you don't have to go to the expense of putting that in place now. Um, but you would have to have it in place before the contract starts. And in which case you would just say, I don't have it, but I will commit to doing it. Um, if you do say, I don't have it and I won't commit to doing it, then um, there's a good chance that they'll um, exclude you because you've, you've, you're, you're basically saying you're not going to get the insurance that they've said you need to have. If you think the insurance is unreasonable, the levels, then go back and ask a question. It does absolutely no harm to ask a question. They can always say no, but if you don't ask it, you won't get it. Okay, so if there's anything else in the contract notice, this is where you would put it. If there isn't anything else, then you would just put, I would probably go back and ask a question and say, 4B6 asks about any other financial requirements, but I can't see anything in the contract notice. Can you clarify? And they'll say, oh, sorry, we should have had that question in there. And they'll either remove it or just tell you to put not applicable in here, which you can do. Okay, so we're in 4C12. Um, and here you are it's asking for examples of uh, you, the service that you've provided. Let me just have a look in here. If I open that. So they've updated, um, they, they've provided you with an attachment to complete. So you have to also enable editing and then update that with the examples and you can uh, upload that here. So I've got one there that's an old one. So I would obviously not be using that the next time. So it's a shame in a way because it would be good if this was one of the fields that it didn't actually hold on to. Um, but I would have to delete that, remove that attachment, complete their one. Um, and again, I wish it was just a paper clip because that would be more obvious um, signal that there was an attachment there instead of like a warning triangle. Um, but that's what that is, it's an attachment. So you would download that attachment, complete it, and then upload it to here. Um, how much of the contract are we going to subcontract? Um, in this case, we'll get into quality assurance. Um, is there an independent body? So do you have any independent bodies that verify quality assurance? So usually that will be ISO 9001, but it might be something different for social care. So you might have different standards that you um, comply with. And then you just put your name, position, date and place in here. Um, I should have said as well before we started actually continually save, 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 save your little heart out because it does it doesn't retain it as you go um and sometimes it thinks you've been um when when you've not been necessarily making any changes it uh, when you've not been moving from box to box it thinks you're inactive and it will log you out but you don't log it doesn't log you out you don't you don't know you're logged out until you go to save it and you find that things aren't there. So just constantly save all the time. Now, the annoying thing is it doesn't hold you in position. So you have to scroll all the way down again. Let me just see if I can grab this box and go back down to where it was. So that anchor is not there on this system. So that's where we were with our concluding statements. And then if you want to, you can add, uh, there's an additional attachments area. So if you wanted to put anything in that wasn't, and there wasn't a field for you to put attachments in, then that's where you would do it. Okay, you put that in there. So I'm going to save those changes. And I'm back up at the qualification response. I'm going to save and exit that because it's the only way for me to get to the technical response. So now you can see I've got one mandatory left. That's probably signing it off. Um, so it's nearly complete. And now we're going to go into the technical response. 
So here it is asking particular questions. So there's quite a lot of questions here. So let me just go through them all. You must deliver in accordance with the Carers Act. So you would just say yes. Must comply with the Equalities Act. Um, you will know what these are. I have no idea what the Caldecott recommendations are, but you must comply with them. Um, must have PVD checks. And you must be able to produce management information reports um, every six months and then for a full year. So this is just bringing your attention to these. And it's asking you to break down the costs. Um, and that must be required for funding. So what they're doing is they're just making sure that you're aware of these requirements. If there was anything in there that you thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not going to be possible to do that, or it's not going to be easy to do that, or they're not really asking the right question, uh, you've got until Monday to ask post questions on that notice board that I showed you at the beginning. Then you're getting into um, more of the written answers. Um, now, in here, you'll, there'll be a, the specification that's attached, and there's also awards criteria and scoring methodology. So that will tell you um, what the different weightings are for each of these questions um, and how they're going to score it. And it's really, really important that you do that. I actually had a tender come in the other day doing a procurement for a housing association. And we, I had deliberately put in the scoring um, mechanism that I wanted screenshots of this system. Um, and to get a four or a five, they had to have screenshots in, and anything without screenshots would automatically score a three out of five or less. And none of them put screenshots in, so they just hadn't read the award criteria and scoring guidance, which I did find quite astounding. Um, so do yourself a favour and read all of that, highlight things, refer to it when you're doing your answer. Right, my big nugget of information is, it said about save, save, saving. As tempting as it might be, because you can make this quite big, don't actually write your response in PCST. What to do is copy it, so you can just highlight it and copy and create a Word document um, put that in here and then what I would normally do as well is go to so it's two 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 I put two 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 service delivery in my Word document And then I would put 2,000 characters. Okay. So, and then what I would also do here is um, take that and copy that into here. Um, scope, location, cost benefits. So you see, I've, what the, I've done what you call shredding the question. So um, proposed model of service delivery. So you could have an overview service delivery. And then address each one in turn. And these will be headings. And you can change them to be a bit more descriptive descriptive if you like um, but that's that's to describe your service now 2000 characters just what to do for this is I might not be able to do it because my box is hidden at the top of my screen but basically if you if you highlight it um, and then do word count you can see here it tells you there's 292 characters with spaces that includes the question but I'm just doing that to give you a rough idea so basically, um, that's 300, so you'd have six times that. So it's not that much that you've got in terms of characters to write this answer. 
um, but you can keep checking how many, and it's the characters with spaces. So a space is a character in PCST. Um, once you've done it, you would then, you've written your blah, blah, blah in there and convinced them that you have got an excellent service delivery model. You then go back into here and then you can just paste it in. See how all the spaces have disappeared? So if you want spaces between paragraphs, and usually I do because otherwise it's a bit of a nuisance for them to read it, then you put them in. It does tell you how many you've got left, which, you know, fair dues, it tells you how many you've got left. But if you copy and paste in and there's zero left at the bottom, just check that you scroll down to the bottom and that you have got every last word in because sometimes um, it'll cut off maybe say the last sentence, even though you think you've got 2000 characters for some bizarre reason, it won't actually agree with you that it's 2000 characters. So that's what you do there. Once you've got that in, you then save those changes, make sure that's kept in, see how it's taking me to the top of the screen again. But if I wanted to now, I can see that my answer is then there. So do that for all of them, copy and paste in. Read these alongside the specification um, and check the keywords. So for example, tenders must demonstrate, like demonstrate usually is a lot, fairly a lot of detail. How, not what or why or when, how. They will make their services equally available to all residents. So this is obviously quite a big thing for them, equality of service and how you ensure that equal access. Equity of access must be considered in respect of the service model. So that's about travel to access and technology and things like that. So they've given you some hints there. So you can it's although you'll be saying what you're doing, it's actually also about how they are going to access this service and give equality. So each time, pay a lot of attention to the words that are being used in these questions. So there's not that many of them. And like I say, it's not war and peace um, because you've only got the 2000. Sometimes actually the challenge is it's not enough. You really can't describe what it is you want to do in as little as 2000 characters. What I tend to do that do in that case is I'll write it in full and I'll save it in full so that if I ever have a question similar to that again, I can go back to the full one. But then I go back and you might have to bullet point some of it or you might have to. It's amazing how you can cut out words once you know, once you start in the habit of it, you we find that we do use a lot of words that really aren't necessary. Um, so then you're cutting cutting those back. Um, you're not allowed, it doesn't keep colour, bolds, anything like that. It just goes in as as so you can't make it look nice. Um, it's just going to be your basic words in there. You can't also have any pictures um in there. So that's it. And then this section here is not scored, but it's about community benefits. So you could answer that in there. Once you've done all of that and you save and exit um, all of these responses, now they're actually marked as optional, which is a bit of a shame because um, it would mean that you could possibly miss them, but you shouldn't miss them. Um, once you've once you're happy with it, you've got everything pulled in that you want to have pulled in, um, then you can submit it. So that's your submit response. Once you do that, it won't let me do that. I'm not going to try. Um, but once you've done that, you will get um, an email confirmation. And also, when you go to your uh, home screen, ITTs and my ITT. So this is how you get into it when you come in the next time. You don't have to search for it every time. It's always there. Um, and what it will say in here, it will be response submitted to buyer. That's what the response status will be. So always go in and check that um, on the home screen that it actually has been submitted. So um, that's actually us um, for today, Fran. That's us had the full run.